What is up, freaks? It's your boy, Matt O'Dell. Uh, welcome to our first ever video walkthrough here at Tales from the Crypt. Um, we have the cold card here. Um, I'm going to walk you through using a cold card with Wasabi. Uh, quite a hardware nerd myself in terms of Bitcoin wallets. And this does seem to be the best setup that we've seen so far. Um, so everything we have in front of us here is 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 what you need to get set up. We're going to try and run through the whole process straight through with no edits. Uh, wish me luck on that, considering this is our first one. Um, and we're going to aim for about about 30 minutes. I think we should be able to do this whole thing. Um, here we got the cold card, as you can see. It's in a sealed package. You should always, when you get your hardware wallets, check to see if it looks like there's any kind of tampering that has gone down. This one looks pretty solid, so you're going to want to open it. Um, it is very hard to tear. You're not going to be able to tear it, so that's why that's why we have scissors. Get a little sticker. Then they give you this card. Where you can put all your important your important stuff on it. I don't love these cards. Um, you know, if you're gonna, you should absolutely write it down. But if you're gonna write it down, you should write it down on a pad and paper. Uh, this basically says exactly what it is. If someone finds this card, um, and they have your full seed here, they'll be able to take your funds. So always store these in a safe place. And I I prefer not to use the one that comes with the comes with the device. This is the cold card. As you can see, it's nice and transparent. Gotta love that transparent build that Rodolfo did. Made in Canada. So you, once again, inspect the device. See if it looks like it's been tampered with at all. This is the newer version, so it's got these nice clicky buttons, which is awesome. Then also we have a micro SD card, which you can either get from them or get a separate SD card. Got my dice and I got my pen. This is everything you need along with a computer running Wasabi. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to plug in the cold card. Uh, one of the beauties of the cold card is it never actually needs to be connected to a computer. So I have this micro USB port. It's just a standard micro USB. Um, and I'm able to plug it, plug it into my cold card. Now this is connected to just power. It's not connected to, um, it's not connected to my computer, it's connected to power. So they give you this terms of service agreement. The scroll buttons are on the pin pad. So you just click down, we go all the way, press OK to accept terms and continue. Now this is interesting. This is something that only cold card does. It shows a number. In this case, C008091. This number should match the number on your packaging. It's just an added precaution to make sure the device wasn't switched out. I mean, of course, they could switch out the device and the and the packaging with a new number, but make sure those two match. Okay, great. Now now we choose our pin code. So I'm going to make it something easy for you guys. Obviously, you never want to share this pin with anyone. Um, but uh, this is a demo, so I'm going to show you a pin. We'll do... So their pins have two parts. And the reason they do this is for phishing reasons. So I'll show you. So we'll do 21 as our first, as our as our first part of our pin. And now these are our anti-phishing words, puppy and sale. So we're going to write down those words. And then 
obviously you should change it up. But uh, as Bitcoiners, our favorite number is 21. So I will do another 21 here as the rest of our pin. So now when I enter the pin prefix, it should always show me the same words, puppy sale. Basically the idea there is if you leave your cold card somewhere and uh, an attacker comes in and swaps out your cold card with their own version that is made to basically get your pin from you, trick you into entering the pin. When you enter those first couple of, of numbers of your pin, it will give you different words. Every device is different words. You get two devices from cold card, you put in the same pin and both, both devices, they will show different words. So always make sure that these words are the same as you're used to. And then you can safely enter the rest of your pin without, without being fished. Okay, awesome. So we're going to create a new wallet. As you can see on the screen, it just says create new wallet. It's generating a new wallet. Okay, so here are our seed words. Now these seed words derive all your addresses. So you don't want to ever share them with anyone. If they have access to them, they can, they can get your funds. Um, obviously, this is a demo once again, so I'm showing you the whole process. I'm going to wipe this device when we're done with the demo. Um, so at this point, uh, the cold card gives you 24 words. This is very, you know, if you've used any other hardware wallet, you'd be, sim you'd be used to this kind of setup. They do have another feature here where if you press the four button, Oh, I didn't update the firmware yet. Okay, so let's go back. Let's press X here. Are you sure? Throw away these words and process. Yes. Okay, so let's upgrade the firmware. Nice, nice chance to, to learn how to do that. So we go to you go to advanced upgrade firmware okay so now we have to download the firmware from cold cards website so now we're gonna do that I took my SD card I'm gonna plug the SD card into my computer Okay, so we got the SD card plugged in. Um, we're gonna download the firmware from Cold Cards Wallet, Cold Cards website, uh, coldcardwallet.com/doc/upgrade. So let's click to download. Let's save the file. Now we have the file here. Um, I downloaded a test before. That's why there's another file here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop that file into um, into the SD card. Now we have the firmware on that SD card. So now we're going to eject the SD card. So we come back to the cold card. It's got a nice little SD slot right here. We're going to stick the cold card in. Chip side up. Nice click. And we're going to press to upgrade from SD card, we're going to press from micro SD. Now it's telling us to pick which one to use. There's only one file, so we're going to pick that.
Now it's going to verify that it's signed by them. Now it's upgrading. And you see that red light means it's not certified genuine yet. You're going to want to wait till that red light turns green. Now it wants me to enter my pin. As we said before, we're doing 2 1. Puppy sale. Look, just like we expected. Now we do 2 1 again. Up. 2 1. Enter. Uh, then I press enter again. Then I press 2 1. Enter. Now we wait. It's going to flip genuine. See that green light? Flip genuine. Now we can create a new wallet. So we just upgraded the firmware without connecting the cold card to the computer. Time for a new wallet. We're generating. It's going to give us those 24 seed words again. Now this is using the random number generator that's built into the cold card. If you don't want to solely trust that, this new firmware has a really cool feature which adds dice rolls. So what you do is you press the 4 and now once you press the 4 it goes into roll adding mode. See? Zero rolls. So we take our dice and you roll it and you can roll it as many times as you want. See it says 1, we press 1. Now it's been 1 roll. 2, you press 2. It's been 2 rolls. Wow, one again, one. And you just keep rolling, five. And pressing the corresponding number on the cold card device. And it's just adding, it's just adding more randomness into your seed generation. So the more you do, the better it is, but it's still combined with the, the randomness built into the device. So you don't have to kill yourself by rolling a shit ton of times, you can roll as much as you want and it can only help you. So we did 11 rolls and now we press OK and it gives us completely different words based on those rolls being added to the mix. So now we write down our words. As I said before, you don't want to ever tell anybody these words um, because then they can take your funds. And so what I'm doing is I'm scrolling through and I'm writing them down. And obviously you want to take more time to do this than I'm doing it. But I'm trying to make this video as quick as possible for you all. And another thing you can do to store these seed words is there's various um, options to store it in metal. You can stamp it yourself. Um, Crypto Steel has like a little puzzle piece thing that they do um, where you like assemble puzzles for your seed words and it's held on a steel plate. And the Cold card has an additional backup mechanism that we will also discuss that I really like. So you don't even necessarily need to save these if you don't want to. Okay, so we got our 24 seed words set. 
and then we press OK. Now they're going to check to see if we actually took them down right because as we said before, if something happens to your cold card, you can restore your funds with, with these words. So if, if you don't have them written down properly, you you know your funds will be lost in that situation. So you have to make sure that they are actually written down correctly. So they want the 18th word, as we see here, that's adjust. So I'm going to press three. Word 19 is key, so I'm going to press two. And they're just going to work me through all of these words. Um, it can take, it takes a decent amount of time here, but better be safe than sorry. Word 12 is brass. Word 10 is slice. Word 20 is runway. Word 15 is surprise. Word 24 is stick. Word 9 is drink. Now a lot of wallets only have you check a couple to make sure that you didn't completely fuck up. But I kind of appreciate that they, they have you check all of them. Um, just some more peace of mind. Word 14 is appear, word 6 is nut, word 1 is scale, word 17 is hobby, word 22 is volume, word 21 is apology, word 13 And, you know, I'm saying the words out loud right now, but obviously when you're doing it for real, don't say your words out loud. Uh, you're just adding another attack vector if there's a mic listening or something like that. There's no reason to. We got to be almost done now at this point. I don't even know why I'm showing you this whole verification. I just thought it was kind of good to be comprehensive. Okay, awesome. Here we go. And look at that, now we got a wallet. So first, before we do anything, I want to show you the additional backup method, because I really like it. So we go to advanced, we go backup, and backup system, press OK. Now they give you 12 more words. These words are acting as the password for your backup. It's kind of cool because a lot of wallets, including the Trezor, use a seed of 12 words uh, for their full backup. So if someone finds this, they might think that it's a seed instead of a password to your micro SD backup for the cold card. Okay, then we press OK. Now they want me to confirm all this again. Um, they want me, now I'm confirming the words for the backup. But at least there's only 12 to confirm. Oh, they don't have you confirm them all. They just make sure that you, you actually did it. Backup file written. To view or restore the file, you must have the full password, which we just wrote down. And now 
I can insert as many SD cards I want and press two every time and I can, you know, do unlimited backups. You can do tons of backups onto SD cards. Okay, now that that's done, um, I might, if we have some time, I might show you how to restore that, how easy it is to restore that and going forward. Um, you should definitely test that out yourself uh, before you like absolutely need it in a situation. It's always good to test out your backups. Okay, so let's receive a transaction um, through Wasabi. We are we go to advanced we go down, we go down so what was the button I just clicked there? I click micro SD card then you go down you scroll down and there's a button right there for Wasabi wallet so you click Wasabi wallet this saves a skeleton file on your Wasabi wallet on your SD card. So basically the idea here is that it's going to give all the information that um, that Wasabi needs to generate addresses for this wallet. It's going to put it in a file on the SD card and we're going to now pop out this SD card. I go back to home, click to pop out. The SD card comes out nice and easy. And now we're going to go back over to our computer. So this gives everything that Wasabi needs to create receive addresses and check your balance on your cold card for your cold card wallet. Keep in mind that if someone gets access to this file they cannot steal your money but they can see your balances and see your transactions. So you want to keep it you want to make sure you keep it secure um, for that reason. So now we have We have the skeleton. We, we, this is the SD card. As you can see, this is the skeleton wallet. Um, this is the, the backup we made. And this is that firmware that we installed. So I like to drag and drop the skeleton wallet onto the desktop. And now we're going to open Wasabi. So we got Wasabi open. We are going to click Hardware Wallet, Import Cold Card, and then on desktop you see new-wasabi.json. Boom, Cold Card is loaded. So now we load the wallet. Okay, so here we are in Wasabi. So let's receive some Bitcoin to our cold card. In Wasabi, every time you receive Bitcoin, it asks you to put a label um, in for the address. Um, so in this case, we'll do Cash App. Generate receive address. We got it. That's our address. Now I'm going to send some Bitcoin to it. Cash App now accepts spec 32 withdrawals, so it's nice and easy.
This is the coin join tab while we wait for the Bitcoin to arrive. This is the coin join tab. Uh, you can't use this in, um, you can't use this directly within the hardware wallet. You have to create another hot wallet. Uh, that's a topic for another video. But anyway, we just received it. That address disappeared. Once we received the transaction, Wasabi automatically removes the address um, so that you have to generate a new address to receive more Bitcoin. Okay, so we have a history. We got the transaction right here. Um, we go to the send tab. What's nice about Wasabi is you have the labeling so you know it came from Cash App. So it's still linked to your identity. You'd want to run it through something like CoinJoin uh, in that other tab. Like I said, another video. But anyway, it's attached to Cash App. So now let's send this transaction back. Um, I guess we'll just send it back to ourselves in here so it's easier. So test, let's do a test, generate receive address. As you can see, this is my full address. Now we go to send. We click this. Full send. VC1, AK, confirm your address. All right, so what we do is we click advanced. So that's how, what you would do is if you had it plugged in, but because we don't have the device built, we don't have the cold card connected directly to the computer, but we have the SD card, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a transaction. We take it, you pick whatever outputs uh, you wanna send, you put your address in here, you pick how much Bitcoin you want to send. I click max, as you can tell. Now I'm going to build this transaction. This is the unsigned transaction. You can't send Bitcoin with this. So we're going to export this. We're going to export this to the desktop. And then We're going to drag it into the SD card. If I reconnect it, if that's where the issue lies. Yeah, so there's just something about how it was mounted. But now it works. So we have it in here. We eject the SD card again, this time for real. And we move back over to our cold card. Remember, SD card goes in face up into the cold card. It's got a nice, satisfying click when it's in. We're ready to sign, so we click ready to sign. Look, they even know that we're sending it to ourselves, consolidating. It even says as much, consolidating 0 0.00194 Bitcoin. Um, that's 194,000 sats. Uh, it tells you the fee and then asks you, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed before, but I, you could slide the transaction fee in Wasabi to decide uh, what kind of fee you wanted to pay, if you're willing to wait longer or not. Okay, so now we press OK. It's signing. So now the transaction is ready for broadcast. So we press OK. And then we unplug the SD card again by clicking. Got the SD card. 
come back over here. We got our SD card. Um, and here you have the signed PSBT. So we drag that to the desktop. We broadcast transaction. See broadcast transaction over here. Import transaction. On desktop, you go to sign P PSBT. That stands for partially signed Bitcoin transaction. And then we click broadcast. Boom. As easy as that. We just received and sent Bitcoin using cold card and Wasabi without ever connecting the device to the computer. Now I'll show you one last thing. Keep in mind that to sign that partially signed Bitcoin transaction, I would have normally had to enter my PIN, but I didn't have to because I was already signed in on this device and it was still plugged in, so it was unnecessary. Let us wipe the device and then restore the backup. Uh, go back. It's an advanced. We go to danger zone. Danger zone. Destroy seed. See that baby? Destroy seed. Let's destroy that. Wipe seed words, reset, wallet, all funds will be lost. You better have a backup. Now what I thought was cute here is you can't just press OK. Uh, are you really sure though? If you press OK, it will abort. Check. Aborted. Because they don't want you rushing through this process. They're afraid that you're going to lose all your lose all your money. So if you scroll all the way down, it tells you when you want to wipe the device, you have to press 4. Um, which I thought was clever and was a nice touch. So we're going to go ahead and press 4. The device is going to get wiped. Verifying it's genuine. Now I'm going to go back to the computer. I'm going to eject this SD card. As you can see, our transaction is here. I'm going to eject this SD card. I'm going to delete this part of the signed Bitcoin transaction. SD card is ejected. Now remember, this SD card has our backup on it, right? That's why I'm doing that. I'm going to put the SD card back in the device. Then we're going to put in our pin. Look at that, puppy sale. The same words. That's only because it's the same device, right? If this is a different device, it'll. if you're restoring the backup to a different device, it won't say puppy sale. sale. Remember that. It'll, it'll say a different set of words. Okay, see, import existing. We're going to import existing. Now they have multiple ways. You can import it with your 24 words. 18 and 12 if it's a different wallet. Remember we wrote down those words right here. Those are your 24 words. I like, I really like this SD card feature, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna restore the backup from the SD card. Select the file that contains the backup. There's only one file to pick from. So we're gonna press okay, backup.7z. Awesome, now we're gonna type in our we're going to type in our password, which is that 12, the, the 12 word phrase.
it's a bit time consuming the process but honestly compared to other input methods um, and other devices that I've used this one is fairly straightforward and fairly quick um, I really like these clicky buttons I cannot tell you enough how much I enjoy them after the first model had a, a, a like touch sensitive buttons and uh, massive improvement on word five here I'm not sure if I'm gonna edit this part out or if I'm making you guys sit through me entering all 12 words but it's kinda of beautiful when the backup comes in now you should be testing this this process you know this restore and backup process uh, with a small amount of funds on your wallet um, just so you get comfortable get comfortable with it you don't want the first time that you're trying to restore backup be when you've lost your device or it's gotten destroyed right because you might have fucked it up you know you're gonna be freaking out too at that point um, so it's just always good to test this this type of thing out we're close we're close I can feel it guys we almost got this um, instead of adding it at the end of the show I'm, I, I guess I'm supposed to say like you're please like and subscribe to our videos subscribe to the podcast Tales from the Crypt and your favorite podcast app um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's all pretty standard. But I guess I got to do the shill. So there's the shill. That way we have it. We have it in here while I'm doing other things. Very close. Word 10. Basically, you're, you're scrolling down to the first letter, and then you're scrolling to every letter after that. If you can't see the screen, I'm hoping you can see the screen. Uh, I guess if you can't see the screen, you probably won't be hearing this part, because I will have edited it. Two more words. Here we go. Last one. It's nice if you hold down the... I mean, I, I you can see these arrows, the whole interface is these arrows on this and the and the X and the check mark. So then I press OK on this, you see? A lot of words start with ST. Okay, press OK, decrypting. There you go, bang, bang, we're back in business. It's been restored from backup. Anyway, that's our thank you for joining us. I hope you found this helpful. This is our, our first of, of hopefully many walkthrough videos. Um, including much more on cold card and wasabi, including a wasabi coin join uh, video specifically and other elements of the cold card. I wanted to keep this as concise as possible. That's the full setup, backup, and restore process for the cold card, including a wasabi send and receive transaction using wasabi. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is Matt O'Dell with Tales from the Crypt. Stay humble and stack sats. Cheers, guys.